All right, well, I'd like to start off the new year with a simple yet powerful effect for you. So I'll move on to the tutorial, I'll, but I'll show you two versions of this effect. Um, one that's 100% impromptu, and one that has a slight setup to it, which that way, you know, it gives you a bit of a choice of what you prefer. But anyways, um, we'll start off with showing you just a, you know, nothing unusual, random deck. And we'll sh shuffle the cards. And what we're going to do is have the spectator cut a small portion of cards, turn them all face up, drop them back on the packet, and cut past that small portion, turn them all, and drop them back. Then what you're going to do is you're going to show off this random amount of cards that they've just turned over, and the card, the first card next to it face down, that'll be their secret selected card. We'll set that aside. They're going to memorize their card. In this case, they're going to memorize the Eight of Clubs, have them secretly shuffle their memorized card in their packet, random size packet. And you then get the spectator to take the remaining cards on the table and to deal a, a, a random amount of cards on the table, um, preferably about half the cards or more. So they deal, say, say about there. And then to take this packet of cards with their mixed secret card they're memorizing, the Eight of Clubs, and bury it with a random amount of cards somewhere near the middle of the deck and squared right up. Okay, now, you can have your back turned while they do this. So let's say you turn back around, you come to the deck and you just give the deck a quick couple of cuts. And then you go to mention that you're gonna to try to pick up on the card they're thinking of. And in this case, of course, you pick up right away that they're thinking of the eight of clubs, which should blow them away right there. But further, you're gonna also pick up exactly where in the deck, even though you've never even looked at the cards, where in the deck their eight of clubs is and you sense that strongly that their Ed Clubs is the 14th card in the deck. Let's see if that's true. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And there you have it, the Eight of Clubs. Okay, so that was one version. That was actually the semi-impromptu version, or the setup version. I'll get into how this is done, and then I'll show you the impromptu version. So for this version, I actually used one duplicate card. All you need is just one duplicate, okay? The Eight of Clubs, of course, I used in this case. You're gonna set the two duplicates on top of the deck. You can then, you know, readily show the deck of cards as long as you don't, you know, show the two duplicates, of course, at the bottom. You can also give the cards a shot riffle shuffle. Of course, you're gonna have to riffle shuffle the cards to make sure that the two duplicates remain on top of the deck. And then you have the spectator just cut a small portion on top. This is what we call, I guess, the cut turnover force, which is what I came up with this trick from. Just this whole cut turnover force idea, which is not my idea, of course, but uh, just, uh, you know, what I started from to create this effect. So anyways, we come to a card that seems to be a random card that they've turned the cards over at, but of course you've forced the top card one of the duplicates. The other duplicate will be the next card, which will be ready for the next part. So you have them shuffle their memorized card, the Eight of Clubs, in their random size packet. You then have them take the remaining cards on the table and just deal a random amount of cards onto the table, you know, about half the deck or half the remaining cards. So when they start dealing, what you're going to do as the performer is you're going to secretly count how many cards they're dealing. So let's say they deal one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, okay? So they stop there, you're remembering 12, they, you then get them to take their packet with their mixed up selected card, place it on the remaining cards, and take the 12 cards, which now has the duplicate at the bottom, in the 12th position, on top, okay? So now their card supposedly is now in the 12th position, even though it's been mixed, they have the duplicate somewhere else. Now all you have to do is a, a false shuffle, whatever you like, I prefer this false cut it's just very quick and simple and you're not looking at the cards so just to do that you just cut three quarters down into the deck set it to the far right and then cut about half set that in the middle and then just take the far right pack first drop it on the first pile and the remaining pile drop that on top and when you do that smooth and quickly it just looks like you did of course a, a double cut uh, mix and but really in fact nothing's changed the duplicate card is still in the 11th position on top of the deck. So let's just see if that's true. Of course it is. Two, three, four, five. And you notice you can deal the cards face up. 
and you won't have to worry about running into the other duplicate card because the other duplicate will always be somewhere beneath the the new duplicate card that's in position okay so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and the eleventh whoops twelve sorry that was twelve cards yeah but you get you get the idea so um yeah so that's the uh the duplicate version now let's just leave the duplicate out we'll do the impromptu version see if you like that better now the nice thing about the impromptu version of course is you can actually have the spectator shuffle their own borrowed deck of cards right at the beginning now to set this one up what you're going to do is you're simply going to play like you're going to pick up on a card they're thinking of this is just allows you to get the setup so you get them to think of a card and you go through the deck and play like you're looking for the card they're thinking of but really what you're doing is you're looking for two cards of the same value and same color side by side in the deck now there's about a 90 percent chance that this is going to happen now obviously it didn't happen this time so i would just pass the deck back and say okay i'm not picking up on the card very well can you give the deck another shuffle so they give the deck another shuffle and again should have a better chance of it happening again so you go through the cards and you look and there we have we see two nines red same color nine side by side so what you're going to do is you're just going to casually cut past just past the nines and bring up this whatever that card happens to be at the bottom and play like you're just picking up on this card and saying now is this the card you're thinking of and of course not likely that you're going to get it right but that doesn't matter you just play like you're just warming up and we'll just get on to the effect but now you've set up two same colored card values on top just like that okay now we're ready for the effect. Now we just do the exact same thing like we did with the duplicates, but now you're using two soulmate cards, okay? So we'll do this quickly. We'll do the cut turnover force, a random portion and selected card. They're remembering, of course, the nine of diamonds. Now you can know what exactly what value or suit card they're remembering because you'll know based on the order how they appeared in the deck. I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly the order, but uh, you can just sort of play with it and you'll just know based on how they appeared in the deck what card is which, okay? Or which suit is which. So you're knowing that they've mixed the Nine of Diamonds and that the Nine of Hearts is the next card. So you get them to deal a random amount of cards, so you're counting secretly, of course. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, let's say. And then they throw their packet on and then you bury them with a random amount of cards. You can do the, the fake cut thing here this just sort of of course um, gives reason for the card to maybe appear closer to the top of the deck even though they shuffled it in the middle of the deck originally but anyways it's always good to do just a little bit of a false shuffle first before you do the reveal now what you're gonna do is they're remembering the nine of diamonds but what you're gonna do is instruct them to say you're gonna um, say let's just take take this a step further with the card you're remembering I want you to change the suit of your card to the opposite suit of the same color, whatever card you're thinking of. So obviously, them thinking of the Nine of Diamonds, they're gonna think now of the Nine of Hearts, okay? But they don't know that you have any idea what card they're thinking of anyways, so this shouldn't matter. But what this does, of course, is now sets up the Nine of Hearts for, the, for knowing the exact location, because you know the Nine of Heart location. You don't know the Nine of Diamond location, the original card, of course, because they mixed it up, right? But now, we're on a new card, the Nine of Hearts. But to them, it just seems like, you know, just a random card they're thinking of anyways. So anyways, so yeah, so now we just move on, of course, to identifying the card they're thinking of now, the new card they're thinking of, the Nine of Hearts. You say, okay, I sense it's the 11th card in the deck. And sure enough, showing the cards face up as you count, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the 11th card happens to be the Nine of Hearts. And that should floor them. So anyways, that's that. Uh... I hope you liked it, and if you can use this effect, please thumb up, and uh, have a happy new year. See you again next time.